Good afternoon. It is the 15th of January and I thought today discuss my first attendance at Toastmasters and then the graduate opportunity experience that I was, I guess, lucky enough to be a part of going forward and kind of the interview process and what they entailed for me and the advice I'd give for other graduates who are looking to go into the similar fields and will probably have to tackle similar challenges. So Toastmasters, they're typically just events in the community. It's kind of how I found it. Um, they're very global. So, and I think a lot of workplaces hold their own. There's kind of separate clubs, but there are also community ones available as well. It kind of tackles public speaking and making it easier to access and kind of let you get your feet wet and kind of iron out those initial crinkles of nervousness, anxiety, like making eye contact, looking over crowds, walking across the, the space in the room and actually do like an arm and R counter and like caught a video the other day and like just every in between sentence and the sentence, starting sentences like arm, um, arm, um, arm. Um. And it's just, it's really interesting to reflect on that and see the, how other people pause and use inflections and avoid umming and ahhing in their conversations. Some of the key points I took away from that, um, eye contact with crowd. And even if you don't look at individuals, just looking between individuals is an option. So like there's two people just looking in the middle of them rather than don't have to make eye contact. Um, pause, incredibly important, I've noticed. Just hearing people and how they use pause and even in, I guess, a workplace setting, pausing invites questions, adds emphasis and like just allows people the opportunity to be like, okay, there's a moment of silence. I'll have my question. You can be like, good question, address it later, et cetera, et cetera. Go from there. Um, a lot of people speak very quickly when they're nervous. And also limits your opportunities to add inflection. And inflections just incredibly you listen to great speakers, the tones of the voices, ends of sentences, adding emphasis. If you're nervous and you're firing out topics like firing out words and just blasting through it, your content sounds very quick, it passes quickly and it's very flat. Um, in the Toastmasters, you actually present standing up. A lot of people tend to creep forward. It's something I noticed. Um, something that like, I did do myself because I was too scared to even move, but something they kind of reflect on other people's work and evaluated. Um, it's probably more depending on the topic, but being able to kind of round out, add a conclusion to speeches or discussions. If you've got something prepared, it's obviously a lot easier, but when you're, they do like, um, short topics, you can actually even structure short topics with adding like, this was the question, address the question, conclusion, little things like that. But this probably comes with a lot more with experience, unless it's something that you've prepared beforehand, like a speech or a presentation. Um, yeah, so Toastmasters all around, great experience. Definitely just as if it like an hour and a half, just tremendously grateful for the evaluation and experience. Definitely something I'd recommend for anyone who struggles facing public speaking, even, or like, like being, I can read a book, but presenting to strangers, is so different. And depending what your goals are in your career and life, invaluable. Now, graduate opportunities. This is, uh, so in Australia, most of them can be found on Grad Australia and Grad Connection. That's where I believe most people are advertised. You can also like use your university job boards. Um, if there is like an exact company you want to work with or an exact entity, obviously go to their careers page or their social media. These things usually open up at least six months the year prior. So like I know some are already open for 2024 at the moment, 
So you've got to get in early if these are the things you want to go for, whether it's law firms, finance, engineering, IT, whatever your sector is, they'll be open very early. So be on the watch for that. Um, probably the biggest thing just for finding it, the position I applied for was actually labeled a register registration of interest. So it wasn't like a, hey, we've got 15 spots for graduates or vacationers. It was just register your interest. Um, I think like, I used to look at those and just think, ah, probably a waste of time, probably not worth hassling, but like, I guess now after going through all the stages, like it, it worked out. So if you see a register of interest and it's the field you want, sector you want, try it, do your best. Um, I don't think there was anything particular about the application questions. Um, is very much cover letter and resume and there's millions of guides and resumes. I think the big things like condense it, make sure you highlight what's actually important. Um, they didn't even contact my references, so I don't know. That's gonna depend very, very much on where you're applying. Testing, I think this is where a lot of people get caught up. Um, I'd love to see how many people actually apply, how many people actually get to testing. I always see videos where they're about like, oh, big four exit opportunities. I'm like, uh, like 90% of you didn't get into the big four and you're looking at exit opportunities. So just, I don't understand who's watching these videos. It's a bit comical. Um, testing I went through, behavioral profile and ability test. So behavioral tests, they're very straightforward kind of, I, most people they are probably irrelevant unless you're like, can't recognize emotions. I don't know. That's if you, if you can't do that, then you've got bigger issues. Um, so they kind of show faces. You just match it: happy, sad, disappointed, gleeful, ecstatic. Um, generally, they're not timed. They just want you to recognize, or there'll be um, scenarios like, "Hey, this happened. What would you do?" And it's just kind of like oh, I don't know just general behavior and recognizing emotions. I don't think there's much to those. They're pretty straightforward. Ability testing, probably the most common one you'll find are the math ones. Depend well, this is obviously dependent on the sector, but the ones I encountered the most were math tests. So one side of the page would be two times two, and the other side would be two plus three. And you have to pick which one's higher or lower. And then, it's timed and as you progress and like you start getting five, six, seven correct, they start getting more and more complex. There'll be there'll be brackets and order order of operations, square roots, um, squared, etc. And it becomes more about just like recognizing it, what it could be, and just estimating rather than actually just doing the math instantly. There are probably people who can do that kind of math instantly, but they're few and far between. Most people just have a general good understanding of this operation is larger than this operation. No one's really calculating it. And if you are, then I don't know, you should probably just be a teacher for maths. Like, yeah, if that's your skill set, good on you. But most people just use calculators or Excels for little calculations like that. It's not relevant. Um, the other common one was vocabulary test, and it's typically down to opposite words. So uh, we just used happy and sad. It'd start with simple words like that, and like, are these words opposites or are they synonyms? And you just pick the answer. Then you'd get words that probably very rarely come across. Even people who are well read would probably find words there that they don't know. And you just have to look at the parts of the words and be like, okay, I know this word similar to this word that part means this this part doesn't mean this and you just kind of piece it together and it's a little bit of estimation there just recommend recognizing parts of words uh, i think job flare job flare is the app i used to practice most of those i guess cmac is the type of testing but job flare is a really good one it's free um, and it was pretty similar to what i did for mine um, interviewing, I was supposed to do a video interview initially, uh, but this was changed last minute to an in-person interview. Uh, I 
can't really tell. Like video interviews, I think sometimes they just ask you, here's a question, record an answer in the next one to two minutes. It's, I would practice just do questions, just top 10 most popular questions and practice speaking into a camera. Listen to yourself. It's really difficult to listen to yourself. I know like just in that first video I made, it's horrendous listening to my voice. It's very difficult to be like, oh, you sound great the very first time I heard you. And it's like, no one sounds good. It's definitely something you have to practice. And even now, just after doing a video and going to Toastmasters, immediately I've recognized I can speak clearer. I'm not afraid to pause. So it's like, just practice. And you're like, oh, it terrifies me. Well, just no one's going to watch it. It's just you. So just do it. You got to practice. Uh, in the actual physical interview, just incredible environment. They were very welcoming and friendly. I would say you need to try and make a conversation out of it because they want to work with you. Obviously, you've passed the testing. You've probably got a decent GPA if, they, if you've made it this far. So they just, they want to work with you. So be friendly, like smile, smiling some. This paper is all about smiling, but like if you don't smile, like don't even bother. Like you have to smile, you have to be polite, be happy to be there. Even though you know, like obviously everyone's nervous, it's terrifying. But if you can be happy and be friendly, like it's in so much easier. And if it comes to conversation, ask them about their day to day, ask them about what they expect of you, what's what was it like for previous graduates? Like, just you need to ask questions. It needs to be a conversation. Show interest, like any people that show interest, like show interest by asking questions. So to have your three, five questions prepared. And then for answers, I'd recommend the STAR method and present, past, future. So um, tell me about yourself. I would use present, past, future method. Uh, again, millions of examples, I won't run through that. And some of the ones that are pretty common that I came across, strengths, weaknesses, um, failures, and how you deal with, I guess, consequences or feedback and teamwork. So, and five years from now, that's a pretty popular one as well. Um, star method situation. This happened at work. Uh, I just did extra hours to assist a team member. The result was we got the job done on time. Like, literally, like just look back at your own work experience or university, maybe you had a bad team, simple things like that. It's pretty easy. Then you might need to like be at some hyperbole or exaggerate, but like, that's just the status. Like just, and if you practice it and you've rehearsed it, just flows. So practice is everything. Um, also, a lot of people say, don't stay how much money you want. Um, I was in the interview and I like, they asked me like, what's your starting salary? And I was like, and I just dodged the question. I was like, oh, I should be paid for the work I put out. And if I perform better, I'll get paid better. And she just looked at me like an asshole. And, she was, and I was like, okay, this is how much salary I, I would expect. They didn't meet it, doesn't matter. Like, if you're going into these opportunities, you're not, you probably won't start on good money. You're obviously focusing further ahead. Otherwise you'd just go get like a trade or something if you wanted money immediately. So yeah, just depends on who you're talking to. And if you're having a good conversation, you can just be honest with each other and be like, okay, what do you want? Like, like, okay, we, this is our starting salary. It's not what you asked for. It's more, it's less. Is that a problem? Like, no, that's fine. Simple as that. Um, just yeah, build that rapport immediately. Be friendly and smile. It's the easiest way to get through. And if they're nice people, then it's pretty easy. Like, I don't think I've had a bad experience with anyone at the workplace I'm going to. So good luck to you. Um, I think probably the biggest thing for me personally, which probably irrelevant for low, I had a lot of work experience in my accounting sector and finance. Before the interview, I get at least 
two to three years, which is going to be tough for most people. A lot of people, graduates, don't have jobs or they're not relevant to the industry they're going into. Just going to have to draw on university experiences and hopefully you've been involved in like the community or something like that. Or a lot of people say like school captains or sporting captains. I don't know. Like I didn't do any of that as an external student. I just had work experience and okay grades and I think I'm pretty easy to talk to. So it's probably just got by on work experience. <laughs>